In recent years, there's been a distinct rise in the use of AI to replace creative works and creatives in general, including influencers attempting to use AI to create content for them. So let's investigate the rise of AI influencers. In recent years, there's been a distinct rise in the use of AI in order to replace creatives and create content for people, from art to brainstorming to even video editing. And while initially I thought the concept of AI when it came to creation was a very niche thing for most of the people trying to cash grab, it turns out that AI might be more common than we might have thought. And that despite my initial dislike of generative AI, it might turn out to be just as good of a tool as search engines and translation AI. Now, I think we all understand that there's many different uses of AI in the modern day. We've all heard of and most of us have even used it when it comes to brainstorming or analyzing the analytics and analyzing the analytics, analyzing different parts of YouTube content and uploads and things like that. But I know that I am certainly guilty of not actually knowing what AI is. I understand it in theory, it's artificial intelligence, it takes data, it spits out an answer, but it's really used as an umbrella term despite it applying to many more things than I think we actively think about. So what is AI? Because AI is a tech thing, there's so, so, so many ways of classification. There's classification based off capabilities, there's classification based off technologies, there's classifications that other people make up because they're businesses. And half of them straight up don't exist, but are only in theory, which I didn't expect because it's technology and science and STEM, and usually those people hate theory and philosoph philosophy. Anyway, AI. The most basic explanation is AI is technology that takes very large amounts of data, synthesizes them, and then creates an output based off of usually something that you want it to do. Most AI is under the classification of narrow or weak AI. It's called narrow AI because it just performs one specific task. But those tasks can be pretty broad. Because narrow AI refers to everything from self-driving cars to like translation technology. And like driving a car, it's pretty complicated. I think a computer that also is like the Game Boy being able to then drive a car, I think it's kind of, it's rude to call it narrow AI. I want to be so for real. But that's probably just my, my gushy feelings and the fact that I think any robot deserves to have a little bow put on it and told that it's a good boy. So, you know. AI is used all over the place on the internet. One problem that we face in the modern day is just how much information and content there is. You know, every year the insane amount of content that's uploaded to YouTube every day, every hour, every minute goes up more and more. And that's true all over the internet. There's just an insane amount of information to now sift through. And that necessitates things like AI. Humans would literally be it would be impossible for us to go through it all, let alone sort it in a comprehensible way. So we make algorithms, we make code, we make technology, we make AI that's able to do that job for us. And it's what makes the internet usable and not just usable, but nice to use. Something that I like to kind of think about for this is the difference between trying to go through Wikipedia articles and trying to go through YouTube recommended. Wikipedia articles are trees and trees of information. You need to know the right things to search and the right things to click on. It's a whole game whether or not you're able to get from one piece of information to another. In contrast, YouTube videos are curated specifically for you. They're easy to get through, they're easy to find what you want to find. But part of the reason reason why we're so chill with this form of AI is that it's doing tasks that would really be a waste of time for a human to do. Where people start getting frustrated is with the new form of generative AI. Generative AI is AI that is creating new content. So we gave it tons and tons of data and it's able to recognize patterns to then, again, give you the output that you want. 
There can be some debates about generative AI on whether it's even creating something at all. Technically, it's just taking everything that it knows and reiterating. It knows that generally the ratio of a cat kind of looks like this. So I'm going to use that pattern to make the same thing again. But even in saying that, the same thing can be said about humans. The idea that there's no original thought, that everything's reiterating on a previous idea that someone else has had. But I think it's a cool thought anyway, so I wanted to mention it. The larger debate around generative AI has to do with it, one, kind of taking away potential jobs, as well as the fact that you kind of need a human in order to be creative and create these things. So when AI is starting to take into creative pursuits, it's kind of a different ball game. While for tech startup Joe over there, who's never tried to draw something in his life, having to create all this work for advertising and thumbnails and all these things is just a lot of work and grading, or worse, he has to go hire somebody. For those of us who enjoy creative pursuits, the idea of giving that away to a robot who can't even put any thought or feeling or heart into it is dystopian. But more than that, as someone who is a content creator and does way too much research on the behind the scenes of content creation, I had some different thoughts about the whole idea of AI content creators. Using AI to help brainstorm and jump on trends is a small part of the whole video creation process. In the creation of a video, there will still be the unique input and perspective from the creator that you're watching. The unique part of creative pursuits is that everyone has their own unique fingerprint of sorts on their content. When content creators hire editors, there are swarms of comments noticing that it's just a little bit different because each person's fingerprint of creative pursuits is a little bit different. More than that, something specific to content creation is a level of trust. There's the obvious trust that you trust them to sell you more reliable advertisements and you trust them to be somewhat honest and real and candid with you. But even more than that, in the content creation space, there's an idea of a trust in what to expect from a channel. You expect a certain type of content, you expect a certain type of humor, and all these different things, and when you click on a specific channel, it's because you want a specific experience. This is something that technology just can't replicate. It's uniquely human, and until we get to self-aware AI in like 100 years, it's just not gonna happen. AI is also unable to adapt the same way that a normal content creator can. Trends change, the YouTube space changes, and humans are able to change with that. We're able to create new ideas, create whole new types of content, something that AI cannot do because fundamentally it's not creating it's reiterating. But in some ways, I think we all know this about AI. You get disbarred if you use AI for certain things that are just a little too complex for AI to properly get a handle on. I mean, even a commentary channel would probably be a little bit too complex for AI. But of course, that's not who's making AI channels. What about kids' content? This wouldn't be the first time that we've seen kids' content be automated to questionable results, which gets us to a whole different topic of children's content and the unfortunate lack of protections for children online. And I'm frankly unsure where to start and utterly unqualified for that conversation. Instead, let's talk about non-child content in AI. Something that was really interesting for me to learn about was the idea of AI video editing. When I first heard of it, I was kind of perplexed. Editing is very complicated. There's layers upon layers and you have to have an understanding of both the message of that specific video as well as timing, both to illustrate points effectively and to and capture humor. How would AI be capable of that many complicated tasks? And the reality is that we're not quite at that point yet. AI is able to cut your breaths and your pauses, which is honestly really helpful as that's a huge part of what modern video editing is. But AI can be used to take long form content and edit it into short form content. It can be used to take a huge 
batch of raw footage and make different videos for Twitter, Instagram Reels, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. And that's where I started having more questions. Jelly Smacks is a service slash business for content creators. It advertises taking content you create for one platform and optimizing it for other platforms. Huge way that they do that is their propri proprietary, 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 I think? Roast me in the comments. AI editing technology. This allows you to input your content and the AI does the rest of the work for you. This isn't a small company like I was kind of expecting. They have Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, Smitha Depok, Nas Daily, and Kendall Ray. I only knew half of those people, but it's what they advertised. <laughs> this is where I realized that my previous understanding of AI and how vastly it's being used was probably wrong. You see, going into this, I thought it was a very niche thing. That it would be the YouTubers who have like 10,000 subscribers and yet are going to teach you how to be a successful YouTuber and maybe like content farms, grifters, those kinds of people would be using AI in these ways. And instead, it's these really big names. These really big names that we largely trust to be authentic. And it makes sense. It reduces, it reduces the workload by an advertised 75%. Even just being able to cut out all the breaths and pauses in a video would reduce the workload significantly. While it is technically, well, it is taking jobs from people, it's also hard to deny how effective it is. AI is much more common than we think, or than I think we cognizantly realize. AI is used whenever you use a search engine, and it kind of has to be. There's no way you can, on your own, search through all of the content that exists. We rely on AI to help us be able to synthesize how much information is now out there. We rely on it to save us a lot of time. And while initially I thought of generative AI as another instance of technology taking over jobs that we enjoy, I'm not sure that that's what's actually going to happen. Generative AI, while at its worst, can take jobs from creatives. It isn't like people are looking at creative pursuits purely as business models. When you watch a video and it's edited by someone different, you notice. So it's reasonable to assume that you would also notice if suddenly everyone's videos were only edited by AI. When you see a piece of AI art, you notice it looks a little bit off. So it's reasonable to assume that people couldn't just use AI thumbnails because people would refuse to click on them. Something that's been noticed in the YouTube space is how unconscious biases can lead to changes in the algorithm. That, well, it's often used unfortunately in the fact that people are less likely to click on POC or content creators that are women. There's also a reasonable belief to be had that it could go in the other direction as well, that people would refuse to click on channels that are only relying on AI. And that AI being used instead in these kinds of ways to automate processes that are just simply tedious is exactly what AI is meant to be there for. It's to take these huge tasks and huge amounts of information and deal with them much quicker than any human could. And that's very hard for me to say as someone who fundamentally doesn't like the concept of AI, which I guess is its own lesson on learning and changing your opinions, but it's kind of frustrating to say the least. And I still think that when it comes to things like child content where they're unable to discern those kinds of things and make those decisions on their own, there should be better protections and more restrictions in place. Overall, maybe generative AI isn't as bad as I thought it was, so long as we as consumers stay informed and make decisions. Vote with your dollars, vote with your views. So I'm trying something new with having multiple setups throughout the video. This is a very like early test out version of it, but I want to try and get more creative with it and like try having different outfits for different sections and stuff. So that production value, she's, she's going up guys. Just you wait. <laughs> Although I feel like it's kind of awkward because I feel like I'm holding the iPad like a basket of laundry. I'm just like, okay guys, so I'm just gonna have this here because I need my script. Just don't mind me as I continue to gesture with the iPad. I don't know, let me know. <laughs>